cool. I have a new problem this week. And what is it this time? I need to get this round coaster through this hole in the paper, and the hole is much smaller than the coaster. Is your life so boring you have to come up with nerdy drama? Not really, but here's the big issue with this problem. The coaster is four inches in diameter, while the longest part of this square, the diagonal, is only three inches. That means it won't fit. Reporting from home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you think I would set up all this equipment to do an experiment that wouldn't work? Don't answer that. Let's look at what we have to work with a different way. Here's the piece of paper I cut out of the hole. This has the same three inch diagonal, so the coaster is obviously still bigger. What we can do, though, is cut the square in half, and you will see that it creates an area that if it were the hole in the paper, the coaster would easily pass through. I hate to break it to you, but you can't cut a hole. I know you can't cut a hole, but we're only looking at this paper in two dimensions. If we looked at it three-dimensionally, we might find a way to make that hole big enough for this coaster to pass through. How? With creative folding, of course, if we fold the paper in half, the hole's diagonal is still three inches. If we carefully bend the paper outward, you will notice that the length of where the diagonal was increases to four inches. That's big enough for the coaster to fit. You also notice the paper lifts up, and now we're creating a three-dimensional solution to our problem. Now you make a fold on the outside where the paper lifted up. The inside's gonna do something similar. You fold that as well, and now the coaster fits. Sometimes you need just a little geometry to fix your problems. Or your self-created nerdy problems. Those two. Reporting from home. I'm Elizabeth Petlin. And I'm meteorologist Ray Petlin. All right, how does he know the answers to all these things? He is so smart, and I love the play with those two. They're oh, yeah. great to get. They're I mean, obviously, well, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, daughter, they're, so. they're father and daughter, yeah. <laughs> those two are great together. <laughs> they're great. You know who else is great? It's Ron Smiley, although, Ron, we feel like you're being left out. You don't have a lab coat on. I, I, I don't. I was wondering, I was looking around in the, uh, the, the KDK uh, closet, but I, I guess there's only two lab coats in there. I don't know. Right. We're gonna have to try to get you. We'll one. get you one. We promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys both looked very snazzy, by the way. Thanks. I have my collar popped. Yeah. You know, just I know. I know. Cool She's got silence. fashion sense. You know. <laughs> Let's talk about your forecast. <laughs> it's a gorgeous start to our day uh, today. We do have some haze still kind of out there. I do want to talk about our uh, forecast. If you're heading to the car wash today. Uh, we do still have a couple of days this week where it's looking mainly dry. Now the difference is going to be on Tuesday. We'll see more clouds around, so I'll put that no in the uh, wax category there. Fair conditions as well. The end of the day on Tuesday, we will have a chance. Very light, but still some spot showers will be out there as a cold front comes through, and that's going to put an end to those high temperatures uh, near 80 degrees like what we're going to see today. Now yesterday we only hit 76 degrees, but I'm forecasting a high today right at 80 degrees. Temperatures this morning already well into the 60s, including Pittsburgh right there at 62, 64 in Washington and 61 in both containing in the Greensburg area and Connellsville at 65 degrees. Here's your seven day 80 today. Your high. Remember I said that there is that cold front that comes in on Tuesday. More clouds around 77. Your ex expected high mid 70s the rest of the work week and then fall weather for your weekend. Look at that. Finally. You've been waiting for fall. Well, I just <laughs> <laughs> she's excited about it. I love today. 80 degrees in sun. I'm telling it's fantastic. you fantastic. I mean, it is nice. I'm wearing shorts once I get out of this lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, we want to share with you our shot of the day, and it's this morning sunrise oh. over the Mon River. Oh my gosh. Look what pretty. a pretty picture. This, of course, is KDK photojournalist Scott Danka, who was out snapping this picture early in the morning for your day, Pittsburgh, and that's the, that's the benefit. Waking up in the middle of the night, you get to see the sunrise every morning. It's true, you're up before the sun. That's true. Still to come, bringing technology to your front door. How one company is bridging the digital divide so that kids right here in Pittsburgh have a computer background they can lean on. But up next, we are heading back outside live uh -oh. for another experiment. We're gonna check in with Selena and Dr. Sam, the science man. That <laughs> is coming up next. And now for another STEM career profile presented by Williams. Hi, my name is Grant Friedel. I'm an operations supervisor with Williams. I get to use STEM on a daily basis through my engineering background. I lead a small team of technicians and we help move gas through our systems to provide energy to homes. 
Stay tuned. William Stemfest presented by Verizon continues next.